Hello everyone, I'm Plain Joe, and today we're going to be covering a beginner's guide to the simulation platform known as Prepared, or Prepare 3D. So, what is Prepared? Prepared is a simulation training platform developed by Lockheed Martin. With it, you can train in various environments ranging from space to air, maritime, submaritime, and even land. For the purposes of this channel, we're going to be using it for flight training. My goal for today is to get you started with using Prepared. Everything from downloading and installing to running your first simulation. So let's get started. First, we'll start by going to prepared.com. There are many great resources to use on this website, but we're only going to cover three for this video. The license options, system requirements, and the downloads. As the name suggests, by going to license options, you can see the range of licenses offered by prepared. At the bottom of the page, you can even find a helpful table to help you choose which is the best for your use case. A common question that I have received is what are the system requirements for prepared? Well, on the website, you can find both the minimum and recommended system requirements. But of course, I can go over my recommendations for system requirements in another video. After you make your purchase of which prepared license you want, we can go to the downloads tab. You'll be able to log in and download prepared. All right. Once we have Prepared downloaded, we can get started with the installation. For this video, I will be using Prepared version 5.3, but the installation steps should be similar for most versions of Prepared. All right, so let's start by opening up the installation folder. You can scroll until you find the executable called setupprepared.exe. It might be called something a little bit different, but you can run that file and you will be asked if you agree to the license terms and conditions. You can agree and install. Your computer may ask you for permissions to make modifications, but once you click yes on that, the installation will begin. Now, it will take a few minutes for this to get installed because there's a lot of content loading. All right, we'll get this little setup successful, congratulations message, and now we can start a prepare. The software should automatically be pinned to your desktop, but if you cannot find it, you can navigate to your program files, Lockheed Martin, your version of prepared, and you can scroll down until you find the executable. Once you run the executable, Prepared will load up. Your first time running Prepared, you will be asked to put in your license information, but after this, you'll be good to go. Once you start a Prepared, you will be introduced to this screen, and this is where I like to talk about the three main components of Prepared. You have the core application, which is what we're covering today. You have the add-ons, which I like to consider DLC or downloadable content for Prepared. And then you also have Sim Director, all of which will be covered in other videos. The starting UI is broken into five main components. You have your vehicle selection. Right now you can see that I'm loaded into an F-35 and you can click and drag around your model. You have your location, uh, what airport, or if you want to start in the sky, you can choose that. You have your weather, you can set basic weather information here. And then you have your time and season. Lastly, you have multiple options at the bottom if you want to load and save different scenarios, which we will talk about. We have the options, so you can adjust the settings of prepared. You have multiplayer components and then sim director, which again will be covered in another video. You can also choose to move on without showing the startup screen if you want to load directly into a simulation. By clicking on the change vehicle button, you're loaded into a menu that shows all of the models currently available in prepared. You can download more online, or you can create your own. As you scroll through this list, you can click on the different model options and see a representation of the model, as well as some general information on it as well. Personally, I like to add a star next to my favorite vehicle so that I can easily find it later. For this example, I'm gonna be flying the F-35 Bravo variant. I chose my model and now I'm gonna hit okay. And now I can choose my location. For this example, I want to change my airport. I'll start by clicking the Change Airport button, and I'm taken into a menu showing all of the available airports. I can search for an airport by name, location, or ID. I want to take off from Orlando International. I'll start by typing in KMCO. The map has updated, and I can see where I am on the airport. In this example, I want to take off from runway 35 left, so I will click my location from active runway to runway 35 left. The map has some other interesting abilities where I can show the Victor Airways, I can show my Jet Airways, and I also have my VORs activated. For now, I'll deactivate those extras. Now that I've chosen my airport, I'm gonna click OK. 
Because I'm taking off from Orlando International, I think fair weather is a good option, but there are other options available as well. And the time of day, let's move our season to the summer instead. Now that I have some settings that I like, I could either save them or load some previous settings, or I can change some other options that I will go into later. For now, let's get started and hop right into the simulation. I'll click OK. Now we are loaded into the simulation. Let me go over some basic controls that will really help you get started. The first is learning how to look around in the cockpit. By holding the space bar and moving your mouse around, you can drag and see around inside of the cockpit. And once you release, your view will stay there. To get back to center, just drag the mouse back up. Additionally, you can change the views. So right now I'm inside of what we call the virtual cockpit. If I right click, I can go to the outside, for example. So let's say I scroll down to outside and let's go to lock spot. Now I can see the outside of the vehicle. Again, I can pan around by holding space and dragging my mouse around. Let's go back into the virtual cockpit. I'll right click and go to cockpit, virtual cockpit. Notice as I change my views, there is a check mark next to what my current view is. So you can see I'm inside of cockpit option and the virtual cockpit. You'll see multiple menu options at the top of the screen. You can change the scenario that you're currently in. So I am in a default scenario right now. I can change the vehicle type that I'm in. I can change if I want to go to a specific airport. So all those same menu options that we saw in the first screen can be edited from inside of here as well. There are world options, so if I want to change the time and season, I can change that. So I can change the time of day by dragging this mouse around, and you can see night turns to day. Additionally, I can access the options or the settings I've prepared. One really cool one to note is the views. I can create new views on top of the screen for better situational awareness. So while I'm inside of the virtual cockpit, I can actually create a new view of the outside of the aircraft. So let's do that by going to outside and lock spot. I can drag this window around or I can even undock the window by right clicking on the window and going to undock. Now I can drag that screen off to a separate monitor if I have one, or I can simply exit out of it and it gets rid of the view completely. There are multiple menu options to get familiar with in Prepared. The best way to do this is by simply exploring, or you can click the Help button and go to Learning Center. The Learning Center is a glossary of information. It's essentially all of the documentation related to all things Prepared. Now, I would like to change some of the settings in Prepared. You can do this by going to Options, General. The first tab is the Application tab. One setting that I like to change in here is the pause on task switch option. I like to uncheck this, which allows me to change to other applications on the computer without pausing the simulation. Next, I like to move to the realism tab. This is one of the most important tabs to mess with in prepared. This shows how realistic the simulation will be to real life. There's a few cool settings that I like to mess with in here. First, I like to go to the flight model. This allows me to modify the P factor, the torque, even how realistic the crashes will be. Now, there's a few global settings which will affect everything in the realism tab. I can go to custom as it is now, or I can go to easy if I just want to fly around. Notice how all of the tabs have changed. I no longer have any P factor and torque. I have unlimited fuel. For a complex aircraft, I even have auto mixture controls. Now I can also set it to hard, which adds all of the realism in there. So that means I no longer have the unlimited fuel, the auto mixture. I even don't have auto rudder. That means that I would need to plug in a peripheral that allows me to use rudder pedals, or I can set a key binding for the rudder. Now I'm going to set some custom settings in here. I will leave the flight model to hard and leave my crashes to realistic right here. But I am going to change the unlimited fuel. Additionally, I'm going to use auto rudder because I do not have rudder pedals connected to my computer. Sometimes I actually turn off the visualized G effects. Now this means that I won't have a blackout or red out depending on the G's that I'm pulling in the aircraft. So I will turn this off. Additionally, you can change some settings with the heads up displays or how your airspeed is indicated. So you can have true airspeed or your indicated airspeed. 
Lastly, I like to make sure that my weight and balance of the aircraft is accurate. So I will uncheck the ignore attachment weight and ignore attachment forces. Next, I like to go to my display. Imagine this as all of the graphic settings that you'll need to mess with. Initially, you can see what resolution I'm running at and the graphics card that I'm using. You can switch the graphics card if you have multiple cards in your computer. Next, I like to go to my texture resolution and personally, I like to set it on high. The most important setting that everybody will want to mess with is the target frame rate. On this computer, I'm going to set my target frame rate to unlimited. For these graphic settings, I'm pretty happy. Now I will go to my lighting settings, which do affect the graphics processing. I'm pretty happy with these settings, so I'll simply hit OK. So how do I get started with flying? Well, I need to be familiar with the controls. You can do this by going to Options, Controls, and this is where you will find all of the key bindings for your keyboard and mouse, or if you have another controller plugged into the computer. From here, I need to know how to work the pause and unpause of the scenario, or the simulation that I'm currently in, and how to work the throttle and the control surfaces of my aircraft. If I want to do that, I can go to the search bar and I can type in throttle. Here I can see the key bindings for my throttle control. I can change my key binding by double clicking on what I want to change and typing in the key that I want. For now, I'll leave the controls to default settings. Once you're done with your controls, you can hit OK and get back into the simulation. I'm ready to get started with flying, so I'm going to unpause the simulation. I hit P and now I can hear the audio. I'm going to press space and pan around to make sure that the cockpit is set up for takeoff. I notice that the parking brake sign is appearing on the cockpit display and I can see the switch down here. I'm going to use my scroll wheel to zoom in a bit. Now if I took off with the parking brake still held, a tooltip would appear saying that my parking brake was still on. I'm going to flip it off by using either the key binding or I can flip the switch in the cockpit itself. This is a good way to show that the buttons actuate inside of the cockpit. By looking outside, I can see that I've already started rolling, so I'm going to zoom back out and pan the screen. Over here, this is my heads up display, which is all of the green text that gives some basic flight information such as my speed, which is on the left, and my altitude, which is on the right. I'm going to start taking off by going full throttle. On takeoff, I can see that some of the buttons and switches inside of the cockpit will actuate along with the real aircraft. I'll start by pitching up, and you can see my attitude indicator also changes, as well as the speedometer. I can see that my gear is still down, so I'm going to hit the G key to bring up my gear. All green and in the window. Now I can pitch back up and I can fly around my aircraft. In this case, I'm using the basic controls, which are the arrow keys on my keyboard. While still in flight, I can use either the keyboard or the mouse to control different switches and menu options. I can right click and I can see outside of my vehicle. I can even go up to views and create a new view outside of the vehicle again. In this case, I will use a lock spot and I'm gonna use my scroll wheel so I can zoom and pan around the vehicle. Even in flight, I can change the time of day. I'll go to world, time and season, and right now I want to get into the late afternoon to get some sunset. So I'll do that and I will click apply, which will load a quick transition. And just like that, we're loaded in. That was done in real time. Now you can see the sunset off to my left there, and you can see that the shadows actually apply inside of the aircraft as well. So there you go. Those are the basics of Prepared and how to get started. There's a lot of content to cover with Prepared, so stay tuned for future videos describing all the ins and outs.